Today I'm going to talk about update 10 for Hell Let Loose and I'm going to give you my thoughts on it. So let's start with Stuttergrad, I mean Stalingrad. So yes, the optimization on Stalingrad is bad. Everyone knows it, it's one of those unfortunate things about the game. But what is noted in the patch notes is that you know the devs know about it and they are working on it. So we got to hope that there is a small patch that comes out soon that you know just improves the frame rate for Stalingrad because for me my biggest fear for update 10 was that if Stalingrad released and the optimization was bad it was going to be this huge bad thing for Hell Let Loose and while it is disappointing it's not created a huge like uproar about the game and I think that could be because people just generally know that the optimization isn't that great for Hell Let Loose it has been improving and for the older maps it's improved even more which is like really great news it is just a shame that Stalingrad's come out with you know bad optimization now my thoughts on the map I do actually quite like it you can get a lot of intense firefights around the control points you know like the train station workers house Pavlov's house but what is disappointing for me is large sections of the map are just these destroyed wooden buildings and yes the Majority of the city should be bombed out. It got you know, heavily bombed and fought in throughout the conflict in Stalingrad. But some of the areas can just feel too samey with these same structures everywhere. It would be good if we could get some more variations in at least these structures. Because there are only like two or three different versions of these destroyed wooden buildings. Maybe give us some more that are still standing but like half of it is destroyed I don't know it'd be good to see a bit more variation there one of the solutions devs could have done would have been just to delay update 10 but I don't think that would have been good it's been said for a while you know it was going to be July the 27th it was a good idea in my opinion to stick with that date and they may have had to stick with it anyway because you know they do have a publisher with team 17 and you know, they may have had the orders from Team 17 to release the game, no matter what, on the 27th. I would like Stalingrad more if it had a stable frame rate. Even if that frame rate was low, it would be a lot more playable. Because right now, you know, there's just so many stutters. I can look from one side of a blown out wall to another side. So we're talking really like 10 meters in difference of where I'm looking. And I'm just stuttering as I'm looking between the two. So many times when I've been looking or aiming towards someone, I get a stutter and it leads to me completely messing up my shot. The stutters are the worst thing about Stalingrad. Not the frame rate, it's the stutters. So yeah, we've got to hope the stutters go. Now on to Kursk. When Kursk was first announced and the map was first shown off, I didn't think I was going to like it. It is a really open map. It's a bit of a tanker's paradise. Especially for the Germans because you know the Soviet anti-armor isn't that good at actually destroying tanks. But I found that I really like Kursk. I really enjoy playing it. You know, going through all these trenches, trying to dodge all the tank fire, having these intense trench firefights, but then getting to the windmills, getting to the middle capture point. You can have some really great firefights around there. What does ruin Kursk a little bit, in one way, but makes it good for snipers on the other way, is the grass render distance. Because the middle of the map is so open, you can see the point where the grass stops rendering. So if you're a sniper, you can just see all these people trying to crawl through grass. And, you know, it's like you know shooting fish in a barrel. It can be. So anyone watching this, just don't go prone in the grass. Just... Just don't do it, just keep moving forward, just keep moving. And I've seen some people say that this issue with the grass render distance is not a hell let loose issue, it's more of an Unreal Engine issue. I hope that's the case. Um, I pretty, I'm pretty sure I remember this being an issue in PUBG as well with their grass render distance. I remember when I first played PUBG I was going prone through some really tall grass in the center of Arangel 
and I just got, you know, taken out easily because, you know, the grass wasn't rendering for other people, but I just didn't realise at the time. I do love playing as a sniper on Kursk. Absolutely love it. The windmills, they are extremely good to snipe from, but at the same time, it's really easy to be spotted when sniping from there. So if you do play as a sniper, try to not go inside the windmill. While you will see less, it's probably better to go you know, at the bottom outside the windmill, try and take cover behind something else while sniping. Just, yeah, don't, don't go into the windmill because while you're up there, nearly anyone on the map can just see you poking out the window, see you poking out the balcony, but you need to scan pretty much the entire map to see who could be looking at you. You know, you're nearly setting yourself up for failure, so try to not go inside and snipe from the windmills. Now, I'm not really going to touch on the armor improvements that they brought into update 10 if you're new to this channel. I'm an infantry guy. I just always play infantry. I think in the nearly 700 hours I've put into Hell Let Loose, you're looking at about an hour, hour and a half I've played in tanks. I just, you know, just give me a rifle and just let me cause havoc that way. But onto the Soviet forces, I think their loadout is pretty great in terms of their weapons. Their weapons they've got, they now have, in my opinion, the worst weapon in the game, worse than the Car 98, and the new best weapon in the game, better than the M1 and G43. I will be doing a new weapon tier list soon. In my opinion, the worst weapon in the game is the default Mosin, the one that pretty much doesn't have an iron sight. It's just like a, a big black rectangle. Like we really need to all come together and join together, put all our knowledge and resources into like a big pot and develop a time machine to go back to when this rifle was made so they can develop good sights for it. <laughs> so then in Hell Let Loose, we'll have the weapon with good sights. <laughs> but thankfully we do get a separate Mosin, one that actually has more of a traditional iron sights. They're not as good as the Car 98 iron sights because they're a bit more blocky but it operates pretty much the same as a Car 98. Shooting the PP, you know, the small PP or the big PP, is, is so much fun, especially in close quarters. You can just, you know, if you get a flank on with the big PP, that's the one with the drum mag, you could just wipe out multiple squads, really. Control that recoil, it is pretty easy to control, so, you know, get practice with it. The SVT, Again, that's basically just the M1 Grand, the G43. Very good weapon. Love using it. But the best weapon in the game for me is the scoped SVT. Unlike the other sniper rifles that can one hit kill people in a body shot at any range, which is unlike their unscoped variants, which cannot one shot kill people at any range, apart from a headshot, the scoped SVT still can only one shot kill people up to 200 meters. That is a great balance decision that devs have made there to keep its one hit kill range to 200 meters because using this weapon is so easy to spot people so easy to take people out it's not that great for long range sniping because of its limits to its one hit kill range apart from a headshot I find the best way to use the scoped svt is not really to play as a sniper you know, being long range and trying to be a bit sneaky on the flanks. I find what's best is pretty much being on the front line or a close flank. Like you're pretty much just using the standard SVT and then you can absolutely demolish people so easily and it's so much fun. The loadout it comes with, it is literally just the rifle. You get your bandages and your melee weapon and that's it. No grenades, nothing, no AP mines. So again, I think that's a balanced choice. It really limits the versatility of the loadout. You've just got your gun, but really that's all you need because it's just so powerful. I think it's going to take some time for the best use of the AT rifle to come out. I know Mono has just made a video on the Soviet AT stuff. So if I remember when I'm putting this into YouTube, there'll be a link in the top right of your screen right now. Go into his video, so check that out. So he goes into details of how many shots it actually takes to kill and it's a hell of a lot of shots to actually kill a tank with the AT rifle but that's not what the AT rifle is used for it's used to disable the tracks 
so your tanks and your infantry can then sort of get around the sides, get around the back of it to either shoot it in the back you know, with your tanks or get satchels on it. I think it's really going to take some time for people to start working together to make the most out of that weapon. But you can actually take out garrisons with the AT rifle and you can do really good damage to trucks, so bear that in mind. So in the end, update 10, in my opinion, has been a great update for Hell Let Loose. Yes, the optimization on Stalingrad is disappointing, but looking back at what work the devs have put into this entire game, I 100% believe they're going to fix that and really improve it. I just got to hope that the patch for it comes soon and it's not an update 11 thing. If they get the optimization sorted out quickly for Stalingrad, put it out in emergency patch. Also, please give us the slight head bob you used to get when sprinting. Now it's just like nothing and it's, it just feels really weird. Give us that back as well, please. But looking ahead, we've got the British coming in soon. I don't think that's going to be update 11. I think that's going to be more like maybe update 15, 16, 17, around then, I think. You know, like it's next year the British are coming, I think. And I wonder what's happening to the Pacific because I'm pretty sure the Pacific was on a previous roadmap and now it's been removed. So maybe they're prioritizing bringing in the British and what I believe is Operation Market Garden. For me, you yeah, know, I love that because I'm British. Yeah, and devs, if you're watching this, if you need someone who's never done voiceover work before and is British to do some British stuff, then, you know, give me a shout because I'll do it for free. <laughs> Let me know your thoughts down on update 10 in the comments below. If you like this video, please give it a like, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one.